Good afternoon from a rather wet and cold home park where Plymouth Argyle will today be hoping to earn their third successive victory against Bournemouth. It's been a much better week for Argyle, starting off with a gritty 1-0 win at Preston. Then on Tuesday, Argyle romped past Wickham 4-2, a fine team performance greatly appreciated by Argyle's loyal band of supporters. So the question is, can Argyle carry on their good form this afternoon? They take on a Bournemouth side, comfortably lying mid-table at present. And considering their difficulties last season, some Bournemouth fans will be relieved just to be watching their side compete this season. So their reasonable start to the campaign will be seen as an added bonus. Let's look at today's teams then. First, it's a welcome to home park to Lee Hodges. The teenager has signed from West Ham on a month's loan and makes his debut at number four. Danny O'Hagan returns to home park after a spell at Western Supermare and makes his first appearance of the season at number 10. Argyle are doubtless going to miss Carlo Corazon. With three goals in two games, the last thing Mick Jones needed was for his, for his star striker to be called up for international duty. Argyle are also without another goal scorer from Tuesday, Ronnie Morget. He's struggling with knee ligament trouble. John Sheffield's in goal for Plymouth this afternoon. Two Simon Collins, three Paul Williams, four Lee Hodges, five Mark Saunders, six Paul Watton, seven Martin Barlow, eight Elgin, nine Adrian Littlejohn, ten Danny O'Hagan, and eleven Chris Billy. Neil Illman, John Besberic, and John Ashton are the substitutes. Bournemouth manager Mel Machen has dropped French defender Frank Rowling and winger Jason Brissett following Tuesday's disappointing 2-1 defeat at Wrexham. Jimmy Glass is the Bournemouth goalkeeper this afternoon, 2 Neil Young, 3 Jamie Vincent, 4 Eddie Howe, 5 Ian Cox, 6 John O'Neill, 7 Russell Beardsmore, 8 Steve Robinson, 9 Krista Warren, 10 Steve Fletcher and 11 Mark Rawlinson. Justin Brissett, Frank Rowling and a Mike, Mike Dean are the Bournemouth substitutes. Paul Taylor, a computer manager from Chestnut, is today's referee. Mr Hawkin from St Austell and Mr Griffiths from Chippenham are his assistants. And Mr R. Scott is tonight's fourth official. So two successive wins. In such a such times, it's a good good time for Argyle. Fine win up at Preston, and then a very convincing win at home to Wickham on on Tuesday. An absolutely beautiful playing surface. Argyle attacking from right to left in the first half, in the green and white stripes. Get this game underway. It's not as windy as um, Mick Jones feared. He cited um, gale force winds as a possible downfall of today's game, ruining the entertainment value, but thankfully the wind's not so strong and we might have a good afternoon's entertainment. That's Danny O'Hagan and Lee Hodges with one of his first touches for the club. Has a shot and complete missed kick there. That was Eugene. He was offside anyhow. The flag was raised so it wouldn't have counted, but an immediate impression from Argos' new loan signing, Lee Hodges, who had a spell last season on loan at Exeter City, so... Southwest fans will know a little about this young lad. It's been a bright start for Plymouth. That's Billy, well in. And now it's Danny O'Hagan. Free kick to Bournemouth. The challenge is a bit too firm there. So Bournemouth currently ninth in the table with 22 points, but that's just three points off fifth place Chillingham. They've won seven or five games rather this season, drawn seven and lost six. Funny enough, Argyle only lie 20th to score more goals than the visitors this afternoon. But it's Bournemouth defensive record that's got them in their mid-table position. They've only let in 14 goals this season. Well, there's danger here. It's going to almost fall to Robinson. Very lucky Argyle that Robinson didn't get a shot in on goal. Paul Watton. Has to kick it into Rosette of the stand to be safe. It's a Bournemouth throw in. Will be taken by Neil Young, signed from Spurs in 1994. 
after a very disappointing performance for Bournemouth at Upper um, Wrexham on Tuesday. Frank Rowland and Jason Brisson came in for particular criticism and neither are in the starting lineup this afternoon. Ogle on the other hand enjoyed perhaps one of their best performances of the season on Tuesday and will be hoping to keep up the good work this afternoon. Here's Adrian Nettlejohn, outstanding in his new position on wing back. Been a revelation in the last couple of games. It's an Argyle throw. Little John looking for support, finds it almost in the full machine. Sheen will get the contact in the end. It's now Martin Barlow. He's shown earlier this season he can shoot from long range. And that wasn't far off either. But Martin Barlow captaining the side for the third time. He's been captain on two other occasions against Preston and Wickham and had two in, so he's a rather lucky mascot for Argyle at the moment. And such a loyal player at the club, nobody deserves the captaincy more than Barlow. been an open first three minutes. This is Warren. He finds support out wide in the form of Jamie Vincent. Vincent's got plenty of time to get across in. He does it. Oh dear, that was close. O'Neill almost got a foot in. Watson got there first. And now it's Barlow who can calm things down for the Pilgrims. O'Hagan, good to see him back at home park. Well, Jean will um, chase this one. But Ian Cox, good defensive work. And to Slater throwing. Billy got on the end of that Bournemouth throw-in. And now it's Lee Hodges. We'll be eager to impress these new fans. Trying to find Little John. Cut out by the Bournemouth defence. It's an Argyle throw. Taken quickly by Saunders. Adrian Little John. Little John running in really into no man's land. Watton takes control. A rather hopeless ball in fairness. Jimmy Class then, the Bournemouth goalkeeper, six clean sheets this season. Been at the club since he signed from Crystal Palace last year. The win holds that ball up. Neil Young helps it along its way. Williams. The captain here, Ian Cox. And he finds Hodges. Hodges has got O'Hagan and Jean to his right. There is Jean. Beautifully found out by the West Ham loan signing. Jean. Danny O'Hagan now. Paul Watton. And Billy again on that right hand side. Set up Corazon's second goal on Tuesday night. Such a beautiful low cross that it was an easy goal really for Corazon. Barlow. And that's Billy. Bit of a scramble going on there. And in the end, Bournemouth get the benefit of the doubt. It's a throw into the visitors. <laughs> Bournemouth on the attack. John Sheffield has to deal with the back pass. Almost finds Little John. It takes an unkind bounce for Bournemouth. And Cox now on the defensive has to play it back to the goalkeeper. Saunders with a firm challenge, throw into the Bournemouth. Good atmosphere at Home Park, helped by a large contingent travelling down from Bournemouth. With no Exeter or Torquay, this is perhaps the nearest they are going to get to a local derby this season. We've also got the Bristol clubs to come to Home Park, of course. Well, a bit of a mishap there by Eddie Howe. And a rather needless corner given away by Bournemouth. Well, Bournemouth be um, punished now for conceding a rather unnecessary corner. Marlon Barlow is set up 
Ronnie Morget's fourth goal on Tuesday night, a beautiful header from Morget. Shame he's not in the side this afternoon. Watson screaming for the ball on the near post. Perhaps wants to get a flick on. Watson was in there, Jimmy Glass struggling. Adrian Littlejohn tries to drill it in. It could go anywhere, Adrian Littlejohn! Well, Adrian Littlejohn's goal against Wickham and Tuesday night was just four for the season and he had a couple of attempts trying to get his fifth there one a rather hopeful low drive cleared away and then a second go went over the bar <laughs> Simon Collins versatile player O'Hagan trying to find Eugene just too much pace on the ball. Watson looks uncomfortable clearing the ball. And now Hodges. Simon Collins with a foul. Clipped the Bournemouth player there. I think it's Robinson who went down. Paul Mavraga eager to get on with things. But there's a teammate down and he's going to have to require a bit of attention. He's finally going to get up. Indeed, it is Robinson down. Felt the force of Collins there. Well, every Argyle player back, obviously fearing a Bournemouth attack here. Jamie Vincent standing over the ball. Looks a bit ambitious to have a crack at goal from here, but he's got plenty of teammates to aim at. Indeed, it is Vincent, and he is going for goal. And I think ambitious was the very... Very word there, wasn't it? Vincent, rather unfortunate last season to miss part of the season because of a nap bite, funnily enough. Went septic and caused him to miss some games last season. And he won't be laughing about that free kick either. A rather disappointing effort. Elgin. It's got more impressive as the season progressed, Elgin. That's Billy, who's always been impressive. Player of the year, of course. Lee Hodges. Lovely cutback. Twisting and turning. Unbelievable skill from Hodges. Crossed in, and it's going to be a goal. Is it? It is! Elgin scores the goal, but Lee Hodges takes all the credit. Elgin's fourth goal of the season, but he'll be the first to congratulate Lee Hodges with some superb skill. Set up Elgin for a rather easy goal. A simple task of placing it back to Jimmy Glass, and after 10 minutes, Argyle have taken the lead. Elgin with a goal. It's from Argyle 1, Bournemouth 0. Saunders very nearly found O'Hagan and here's Lee Hodges who's on fire at the moment. That's a goal kick. So it's taken just 10 minutes for Argyle to find out all about the wonderful skill of Lee Hodges on loan from West Ham United. Had loan spells at Exeter last season and Leighton Orient. Made a real impression with Peter Fox. And with a lot of help from West Ham, who played a big part in letting um, Lee Hodges come down to Argyle, which Mick Jones greatly appreciated, I'm sure. And let's hope in the time that Lee Hodges is at this club, we see a lot more skill. Like we just saw there, let's set up a fourth goal of the season for Olgi. Number nine, here's Adrian Littlejohn. Oh, 
Good to see Argyle making a positive start to this home game. In recent home games, they've had disastrous starts. Against Southend, they conceded an early goal. Against Burnley, they were 1-0 down by 10 minutes. And against Wickham on Tuesday night, Simon Collins scored an own goal within the first five minutes. Argo were in danger then as well. Desperate, they, um, their defending's on top form at the moment. A rather dangerous ball that nobody could get on the end of. Number seven, here's Beardsmore. First time ball, cut out by Billy. Beardsmore again, cut out, I get signed by Lee Hodges. Elgin. Hodges, dispossessed. And then a bit of space here is Warren. Again, his control's not good. O'Neill. All sides appealing. The referee favours Bournemouth and it's their first corner of the afternoon. So Bournemouth in the last minute, really pressurising Argyle. Get a corner at the end of it. So the danger spot from over from the Pilgrims. 13 minutes gone. Mark Rawlinson's going to take it. Drilled in. The shot in there took a lucky deflection for Argyle. Beardsmore out wide and a rather disappointing ball to Rawlinson. On well, the shot put in there, could have gone anywhere. Lucky for Plymouth, it hit one of their defenders. And Argyle can breathe again. O'Hagan. Fletcher. Long serving Bournemouth player Fletcher. Paul Williams, well cut out. Hodges. The referee lets the play continue, and that's Elgin. Elgin against Cox. And Elgin gets the better of Cox. Beautifully finds Adrian Littleton. Littleton's going to have to go alone. Oh my word, that's superb! And Argyle getting all the breaks here. And Elgin, who scored the first goal, this time setting up Littlejohn. Getting past the Bournemouth star defender Ian Cox. Found Littlejohn. Littlejohn still had an enormous amount of work to do. But didn't he do it with great ease? Beautifully passed by Jimmy Glass. 15 minutes gone, it's Plymouth 2, Bournemouth 0. Adrian Littlejohn with his fifth goal of the season doing the damage. Well, Argyle have been dogged by bad luck since the opening day of the season. Nothing seems to have gone right for them. But perhaps we've now seen the turning point. Starting off last Saturday up at Preston. On Tuesday, the goal started to roll in, and Argyle had a bit of luck as well. Once the refereeing decisions were on the side of Argyle, and today, Argyle's confidence is highlighted with two superb goals. Little John's finish was immaculate there. And Home Park is a cause of celebration at the moment. Bournemouth then, an enormous amount of work for them to do, but plenty of time to do it in. Young. And his ball will find its way all the way through back to John Sheffield. Signed from Peterborough United in the summer, John Sheffield. And it's been a real hit with the fans making some crucial saves. Bournemouth then. The onus is on them to attack. Poor balls like that from Beardsmore. They're going to struggle to find the four. Play that there by O'Neill. 
and now it's paid more. Bids more again, he's seeing a lot of the ball. A low drive there, he might run anywhere, and the end finds Paul Watson. And Watson very relieved just to find Billy. Billy Ford now, looking for O'Hagan. In the end, it's Ian Cox. Young to Fletcher. Fletcher drills it in. Paul Watson with the defending. It's one of those days at the moment for Bournemouth. This is Robinson. Saunders. Williams hits his own man, Lee Hodges, and a Bournemouth corner. The pressure's certainly on at the moment. Billy's limping, and I hope that's not serious. He's been struggling all week with an injury. And the referee calling for a stretcher. Billy valiantly telling him um, the referee's okay. He's had all treatment um, on a knee injury that's troubled him in recent weeks. And I hope that's not a reoccurrence of that injury there. Whilst Billy receives treatment, it's a Bournemouth corner. Swung in. We'll find Warren. The shot hits Saunders. Hodges clears it away. <laughs> Billy's okay to continue. He's limping, but... You just hope he's a, such a vital player, it doesn't need to leave the field. <laughs> in stark contrast to last season's game between these two sides at Home Park, last game of the season, a rather dull end of season game, nil nil it finished along well Bournemouth are trying everything they can to just try and get the ball into the penalty area but taking all sorts of deflections all throughout the afternoon and not having much luck at the moment Saunders playing everyone offside. Sheffield out. It's a real chance here for Robinson. Well, Williams missed it, but thankfully for Argyle, Robinson missed the target. And Sheffield was in no man's land there, punching the ball. It fell to Steve Robinson. And Robinson trying to lob the ball into an empty net and failing to do so. Sheffield. O'Hagan with a flick on. Number three is Jamie Vincent. Vincent gets round Elgin. Barlow fails to cut that one out and Bournemouth retain possession. Rawlinson. Rawlinson gets across in. He's looking for Fletcher. Too high for Fletcher. And will run nicely for the goalkeeper, John Sheffield. Adrian Littlejohn. Elgin. Barlow takes over. Now it's Hodges. Steve Collins. To Mark Saunders. It's not been a bad five minutes for Bournemouth, they've had all the pressure. But they don't seem to get any much luck at the moment. And they've not really had an effort on target to um, recall at present. This is Neil Young with a throw in. Russell Beardsmore. Very disappointing effort from Beardsmore. Not reminiscent at all of his days, he was Man United. 
Well, little John, using all his strength there to try and thread his way through, and he ends up getting a sign off for John, appreciated by the fans. That was Neil Young, and that was Paul Watton. Sheen got the force of that challenge, but the referee plays on. Saunders brought down. John O'Neill, the offender there, and it's an Argyle free kick. Paul Watton. Perhaps Billy might be his intended target. He's got O'Hagan and Sheen up front. Mark Saunders and Lee Hodges joining in the action there. Watton. Looks like O'Hagan gets on the end of it first. Well up. Elgin's going to have to do well to keep that out of ball in play, and indeed he can't. And it's a Bournemouth goal kick. Enjoying the possession at the moment. Vincent. Warren. And Watson. <laughs> Very powerful clearance. Warren, rather hopeful, comes into the area, well up there Ian Cox, Billy, Chris Billy, showing a lot of pace here to get clear of his man, has to hold the ball up now, Adrian Littlejohn screaming for the ball, it's Mark Saunders, plays it down to O'Hagan, Bournemouth survived that one, this is now Warren, Simon Collins with a foul, free kick to Bournemouth. And Mel Machen desperately getting orders across to his players. He's going to have to do a lot of tactical changes now. Can't have expected to be 2-0 down at this stage of the game. Again, Rawlinson's ball lacks quality. Hodges. Algin. And now it's Danny O'Hagan causing Cox all sorts of problems. The referee doesn't want any of it. Play on to the order. Williams. Fletcher. Rawlinson. And now it's Jamie Vincent. Robinson. Put Paul Watson, good challenge, throw into the visitors. Well, half an hour before kickoff, it was a terrible downpour. I'm just thankful for those poor Bournemouth fans. I'm protected from the elements that the rain stopped. That's the last thing on their mind at the moment. They're pretty miserable as it is because of the stuck they're saying the mate of the game. They'll be a bit more brighter now by the third corner of the game for Bournemouth. the corner taken in and Collins looked like he got to it but in the end Steve Fletcher was rose above everyone else to get a header and on goal but it was way over no problems for Sheffield Came off Watton, last to throw into Bournemouth. No, it's rather quiet at the moment. But 
as long as I will get the three points, I'm sure the Argyle fans will let it be quiet for the remainder of the game. This is Rawlinson. Spreads the ball out to the right-hand side. It's Neil Young. Beardsmore. Rawlinson again. Rawlinson going for goal. Volleyed away by Paul Watton. Nell Jean chests it down. Cox appeals for a handball. And now Cox is in possession. This is Young. Young, very disappointing cross. Well, he missed just two games last season, Neil Young. Time from Spurs. And he completely missed his cross there as well. It was a very disappointing effort. And the end of a promising move. O'Hagan. Gives away a throw in. Well, all the possession in the last, last 10 minutes has come from Bournemouth, but can they capitalise on their dominance? Fletcher goes up for it there. Oh, it's a lovely effort there. Nodded back by Robinson and then the volley, first time, but too much height on the ball. So we're at the half hour stage, from a feeding by two goals to nil. Elgin and Adrian Little John with the goals. Paul Watson, Williams, Adrian Little John, chest it down. Ball is it forward. Ian Cox, good play. Very good player. Bit of a scrap in there and finally the referee stops the play. Paul Taylor giving a free kick to Bournemouth. Rawlinson. Rawlinson, low cross. Away by Williams. Beardsmore. Beardsmore crossing it in this time. The win holds it up. The header was there by Fletcher. He's had a couple of chances now. And the man signed from Hartlepool back in 1992 with one of Bournemouth's first efforts on target. The rain now lashing down as Hodges plays the ball forward looking for Jean. But the pace of the ball means Jean is helpless. So it's umbrellas out. In the opening quarter of an hour, it looks like it will be raining goals as well. But the goals have dried up as the heavens opened up. Watson. Paul Williams having to do a lot of chasing back in this game. Rather than play it back to Sheffield, tries to clear the ball, but it came off Warren and I had to be content with a throw in. Chris Billy, who was injured earlier this game, of course. Probably might have to come off, but he's prepared now to take this throw in and it looks like he's recovered from that nasty looking knock he sustained in the opening quarter of an hour. Barlow. Argyle testing the pace of the Bournemouth defence with several long balls forward. Argyle trying to catch Bournemouth on the break. This is Jimmy Glass. <laughs> Collins, the dominant header. He's there again, this time not so good. Watson got the last touch, and then Barlow and Vincent in a fair old challenge, and the Argyle captain wins his side. A throw in. Barlow. Collins forward. OG now. Didn't find O'Hagan. O'Neill. Away with ball. Frustration now setting in in the Bournemouth ranks. It's Collins. It's a throw into Bournemouth.
History's not on Bournemouth sides. They've played 29 times at home park. Argyle have won 20 of those games. Bournemouth have won just the three. And in their last six meetings, Bournemouth have won just one game. And it's goals Bournemouth need. Well, again, history's not on their side. They've scored just 18 goals in those 29 visits. So they're going to have to break the norm this afternoon if they get any, get any points. Williams. Hodges. Number two is Neil Young. Bournemouth really just have to make more from their possession if they're to get back into this game. Well, Neil Young's holding his face and that challenge with Little John. Little John looking a bit wondrous. What's going on there, he's asking. I think Little John's um, conceded a free kick and I think Little John's best just to walk off. But he's near got booked. Form of free kick, a good chance to get back into this game. The free kick's good, but again, just evade Steve Fletcher who came on rushing in at that far post. And another chance goes to the begging. The rain stopped, but it's still rather gloomy out there on the pitch. Paul Williams, Sheffield. Well, Collins and Fletcher in combat. And Collins is the one who's impeded against, I'm afraid. Paul Taylor blows in favour of Fletcher. And it's a former free kick. Well, plenty of bodies have came out yet again. I got tried the offside trap. And the flag is raised indeed against Cox and many others. I got now a rare attack. Williams runs out of room, I'm afraid, and it's a throw into Bournemouth. Saunders to Collins. Collins now trying to find Danny O'Hagan. Nine minutes left of this first half. Plymouth 2, Bournemouth 0. And that's Saunders. Beardsmore with a header. Saunders again in challenge. It's now Beardsmore again. A bit like Groundhog Day at the moment. Can Little John get on the end of that one? He can. Football's rather untidy at the moment. Cox. Former throwing came off Elgin last to his work is appreciated by the Argyle fans there. <laughs> Little John. Lee Hodges, desperate to get back into this game. He's been rather quiet since his heroics early on. Although um, I don't think we can expect miracles from the guy for 19... Poor ball there. Easy for Cox. But O'Hagan determined, trying to get possession back. And O'Hagan beat Cox very well indeed, but in the end he was sandwiched between two or three defenders and 
are asking the impossible of him. What in a terrible miscue. Can Bournemouth make him pay for that mistake? It's Warren. Still Warren, trying all the skills in his repertoire there. Finally, finds a teammate in the form of Neil Young. Beardsmore, Young again. Determined tackle there from Hodges, but the ball's still in play, and still it's Young. What well, another disastrous cross, and the service to the strikers has been pretty poor indeed. And Mel Machen, I'm sure, will make that point to his team come half time. Oh dear, well, a bit of confusion there. Jimmy Glass finally clearing it away. But he looks a bit uncomfortable. Danny O'Hagan certainly showed he's committed to the cause. And Jimmy Glass is injured for now. I'm pretty sure in saying he's uh, ever present this season. So I asked Glass soldier is on, Argyle have possession, Chris Billy. O'Hagan chests it down and tries to spectacular. That was a lot closer than I think Jimmy Glass would have imagined. And Danny O'Hagan, who was released by Argyle a few months ago, has been recalled now that Argyle have such a shortage of players. I think I'm right in saying he only ever scored once with Plymouth up at Stockport back in the Peter Shilton days. And even there, it was a rather scrappy goal. That was a lot more spectacular. And Jimmy Glass was struggling. Bottom. Here's O'Hagan, who's on fire at the moment. Hodges. Elgin. Elgin somehow managed to keep possession. And Saunders rushing into the penalty area. Billy. Blocked superbly by Robinson. This and Argyle throw in. Argyle a back alive. They've had to enjoy a lot of Bournemouth pressure, but now they're having a few attacks of their own. This is Martin Barlow. Elgin. Still Jean. Somehow finds, finds Chris Billy in the end. But Billy trying to do a Lee Hodges, this time it doesn't work. Argyle still in possession. Jean, Watson. Collins. Number 10 is Danny O'Hagan. Billy. The O'Leys now starting to come from the Argyle fans. They're enjoying this. Throw him to Bournemouth. on that left-hand side attacking and John Sheffield down well of course any danger good handling by John Sheffield always breeds confidence in your defence when you've got a goalkeeper with such confidence now Sheffield's kick all the way to his opposite number O'Hagan was chasing that all the way to the bank Danny O'Hagan and Billy again. Lee Hodges will chase this one, but again, the pace of the ball is phenomenal. And it stops any hopes Lee Hodges had of getting on the end of that ball. Bournemouth attack, John O'Neill. Rawlinson out wide to Jamie Vincent. Mark Rawlinson again, Barlow for company.
Watson. Billy away. O'Hagan's one of the only men up. He's got El Sheen as well, but for now O'Hagan has to keep possession. And again, Windsor side uh, throwing, which is appreciated by the Argyle fans. Obviously pleased to see a familiar face back on the Argyle side. Mark Saunders to Adrian Littlejohn. Littlejohn, turn up speed, finds Martin Barlow. Billy was on the right-hand side of the pitch screaming for the ball, completely ignored by his teammates. Williams. Littlejohn, lovely first touch to Lee Hodges. Hodges. This time Cox is there first. Littlejohn again, I got playing some nice possession football here. Are they going to be rewarded with yet another goal? Little John didn't get full contact on the end of that, but Barlow can still cross one in. Watson holds it up. Plays it out wide to Chris Billy. Billy finally gets a cross in. Heads it away. Barlow now. Hodges in some space. This is dangerous. Hodges is going to go for goal. Confident youngster. And the end over the bar. Jimmy Glass had two efforts on target to deal with. He's let them both in. Although I think I'm a bit unfair on the lad. Two very good finishes in fairness. A lot of goalkeepers would have been pushed to save those. Little John. We're in first half stoppage time. This is Beardsmore. Stopped by Elgin. Elgin trying to find Billy, but a bit of a poor pass, and now Bournemouth can press on. Desperately trying to search for a comeback goal just before half time whistle. Would certainly give them a boost. Number nine is Warren. O'Neill, first time ball. Dangerous again, cutting it back. And unbelievably, Bournemouth failed to score again. They've had absolutely no luck in this first half. It finally came off Neil Young. Perhaps to just stretch his boots and hope for the best. And it went wide of Sheffield's goal. And excuse the pun, but Raga are certainly getting the rub of the green in this first half. Well, Raga are perhaps a bit lucky to be 2 0 up at half time, but after some of the wretched fortune they've enjoyed this season. Perhaps it's about time they had some of the luck. Elgin scored the first after 10 minutes after some superb work by Lee Hodges. And then Adrian Littlejohn with an individual effort five minutes later for Argyle in 2 0 in front. An interesting second half on our hands. It's Pim of 2, Bournemouth 0. So 2-0 up, can Argyle hold on to their lead? They've kept just two clean sheets all season, Plymouth, and just the one at home, so it'd be a major coup if Argyle could not only beat Bournemouth, but stop the goals from going in as well. It appears to be no changes at half-time from either side. So eight, Paul Taylor now to take the ball to the centre, centre spot so he can get on with the second half. Bournemouth then in their change strip. 
attacking from right to left in the second half, attacking the Devon Ball in. We'll get the second half underway. They're currently two goals to nil down. A major task now ahead of them. A lot of hard work if they're to get any joy from this afternoon's proceedings. Bournemouth immediately put the pressure on Argyle. Cut out by Watton. Collins. Collins, round one. Referee flags for a foul, but the referee quite rightly playing advantage. Argyle are in possession. It's Argyle's ball. Our goal at the beginning of the day were 20th in the second division. That win over Wickham got them out of the bottom three places of the um, relegation places, of course. Another win today really would um, lift our goal up the table. I'll, I'll get there in the end. Refreshingly cold at the moment. Jimmy Glass kicks the ball upfield. <laughs> Fletcher. So I got throw in. Adrian Norton John might take it. Quickly finds Barlow. Barlow turns. The outside of the foot finds Chris Billy. Saunders is making a run from midfield. Argyle being told to get on with it by the referee. To Chris Billy, the signing from Huddersfield Town. Throws the ball up towards O'Hagan. Oh, Sheen was at Rotherham last season, scoring six goals. Flick on by O'Hagan, by Jean. Clearly a foul there. Jean looks very uncomfortable. And Jamie Vincent, the offender, quickly apologises. So Martin Barlow's got O'Hagan, Jean and Saunders in the penalty area. Watson's going to join them. It's a good one. So got a flexion of Saunders in the end and away for Bournemouth. This is Lee Hodges. Billy to Hodges again. Hodges turns, he wants a runner. Well he had no support Hodges and he's letting his teammates know that point in force. O'Neill. Enters the Plymouth path. O'Neill. Good frosting run here by the Form of number six finds Rawlinson. Rawlinson trying to cut it back. This is Fletcher. And Argyle finally get it away through Watton. Beards Morrison rushing in there. O'Hagan now takes on Cox. But Cox is a good defender and it takes a lot to get past him. And Argyle in the end do illegally. Free kick. This is Russell Beardsmore now. So much for Bournemouth to do, so little time to do it in. Beardsmore. That's a much better cross. Warren tries to knock it down. And Bournemouth, instead of passing it around, really should just get a shot in. Spending all this time passing it to each other. It looks very nice, but at the end of the day, they're not causing any Argyle any damage. Hodges now. Barlow finds O'Hagan, who in turn finds El Sheen, the man who scored the first goal of the afternoon. Throw in there to Bournemouth to the disgust of some of the Argyle fans in the Mayflower enclosure. Oh, 
Robinson. O'Neill. But Paul Williams has done a good job. And then you find Rawlinson though, and Bournemouth continue to press. It's Neil Young. Neil Young, he's got Beardsmore to his right, instead decides to go alone. Rawlinson. He's established himself, Rawlinson, in the side for the last 12 months. Key fixture in this Bournemouth side, and he's making a run now for Beardsmore, but instead the cross is put in. Nodded down, and again it's nice football, but there's no end product, and Barlow can get it away. The flag stays down, but Sheen cannot control the ball. With Cox for company, and it will run all the way through to Jimmy Glass. Fletcher. Bidsmore to his left. This is Jamie Vincent. We'll try the first time cross Warren. In the end, has to do make do with a corner kick. Well, four corners to Bournemouth now in this game to Argos one. And the Argos fans getting behind their side, desperately wanting to keep the clean sheet. But for now, I've got to have that two-goal cushion. We're six and a half minutes into the second half. A corner taken by Vincent. Lee Hodges. Not the tallest man in the, way, in the field, but still gets a header away. It's Young. Bidsmore. Demand support. Doesn't really get it, and instead has to cross it. That was away there by Saunders. Cox. Barlow. Constant pressure now. Cox. Fletcher tried to get in there, instead it was cleared away again, and Hodges nicely chested down. Algin. Little job. Paul Watson. Watson's ball isn't good. And Vincent again starts another form of attack. But Fletcher's pretty poor control. And a combination of Watson and Billy get possession back for Plymouth. A bit like a yo-yo at the moment. And there you are, guess whose possession it is now? Bournemouth's. This is Little John. Couldn't stop the ball from going out, and it's a throw into Bournemouth. Which Rawlinson takes very quickly indeed to Neil Young. And he has it back again now, the Bournemouth number 11. Good skill to get past Saunders. Barlow only half cleared it. The cross is dangerous, and what a hash of a shot there by Steve Robinson. I think the flag was raised, it wouldn't have counted. But not for the first time, Bournemouth have a great opportunity to at least hit the target and this time Steve Robinson signed from Tottenham three years ago really missed yet another golden opportunity Martin Barlow, Saunders wisely leaves it for the Argyle number seven. Can Elgin get this ball first? He's got a lot of work ahead of him, Gene. And just well in the end to win a throw in. Quickly taken. Martin Barlow in some space. And a very dangerous clearance there by Vincent. Will be relieved that this clearance went over the bar. I thought we were going to have a spectacular own goal on our hands there. Good initiative by Gene to take the throw in early. Barlow then whipped in across. And Vincent headed it over for Argyle's second corner of the game. So Bala will take this corner. Watson's in there, Jean and O'Hagan as well. Making some running. You've got Saunders and Collins also vying to get on the ball first. And I thought we're going to see a shot from Hodges for a moment there. Instead it's Billy. Lee Hodges. Billy. He might get a shot in here. And in the end, outside of the, the outside of his foot, and it's Billy's reaction says it all, really. Hands against his head. He knew he should have done better, and it was a rather poor attempt by the Argyle player of the year, Chris Billy. So Argyle playing with three centre-halves, and Watson, Williams and Collins. Little John and Billy are the wing-backs. 
But a very attacking lineup in that you've got Lee Hodges in midfield, who's a very attacking player. O'Hagan, Jean, and Billy and Little John, of course, have both played up front in their time. I'm just trying to think of a serious save John Sheffield's had to make and with all the possession Bournemouth they've not really stretched the Argyle goalkeeper. Mel Machen would be, be very disappointed with that fact. Well up there by Ian Cox and that was Robinson, Rawlinson, Neil Young. Paul Watson now and safety is the Key thing with what and well played. No point trying to be a hero, just clear it. And then the team can't do any damage. Young will take this throw in for Bournemouth. Well, we've had comebacks here at home park. Bournemouth mustn't lose heart. I go a 2 0 up against Grimsby at half time. Grimsby came back to draw 2-2 and of course it was that great game against Oxford when Argo were 3-0 up at one stage and ended up losing 5-3. So Bournemouth must take heart from that and keep battling until the final whistle. Cox was up there against O'Hagan. Now it's Neil Young. Young Divering has to play it back to his goalkeeper. Glass takes a touch. Very calm indeed and finds Young again. Barlow with a foul. There haven't been any bookings in this game. Been a very competitive but fair game. And now it's Russell Beardsmore. Beardsmore gets a cross in. Fletcher tried to get there instead. Watson dispossessed him. And anywhere will do for Argyle. Jean. Gets some sort of touch onto it. And then the bounce does O'Hagan a lot of favours. Hodges now. Gets around Cooks. Still Lee Hodges. And he tried to get some sort of cross in as he was struggling to keep his balance. But a very determined play. Crossing the Bournemouth players. No end of problems. As he has done throughout the afternoon, in fairness. Let's just remind you about the substitutes available this afternoon, especially in Bournemouth's case. They might feel a change is necessary soon. They've got Jace, Justin Brissett, Frank Rowling and Mike Dean available. I've got to have Neil Ilman, John Beswerick and John Ashton on the bench. Although you can't really see Mick Jones making a change at the moment the way his side are playing. John Sheffield. Algene. And now it's Paul Watson. Watson's pass wasn't really good and the Argyle fans groaning, letting him know that. Bournemouth throw in. We're approaching now the one hour mark of this game. Half an hour for Bournemouth to get back into this game. 2-0 to Plymouth for the moment and let me just remind you the goal scorers were Elgin and Adrian Littlejohn. So Hagen. Showing a lot of determination, O'Hagan. Keeps the ball in play as well. O'Hagan and Hodges there trying to keep possession for Plymouth, but in the end they lose out and now Bournemouth press forward, as they must do for the remaining half an hour of this game. It's Fletcher. 
Bournemouth now looking dangerous. This is Vincent. Plenty of time, Vincent, to get across in. Vincent entering the Argyle penalty area. But Barlow doing a captain's job. He finally cleared away. Wasted ball in the end from Eddie Howe. 13 appearances for Eddie Howe last season. And a put of a poor end to a promising move there for Bournemouth. LG. Cox. Not too much to shout about in the second half. Argyle doing a containing job, but I'm saying that, doing it quite well at the moment. Restricting Bournemouth to half chances. Bournemouth throw in there. I got a throw in. The game rather flat need at the moment. Needs one like Lee Hodges to take control. And live and proceedings up. One oh, press forward. It's number six here, O'Neill. One must throw. Well, Bournemouth will pay for a corner, but they're not going to get it. It's a goal kick to Plymouth. And Argyle can just settle things down a bit. Well, Argyle slowly but surely pushing away from those relegation places. They've got the welcome relief of an FA Cup game against Cambridge on Saturday. And November then sees a tough away game at Bristol City. Another game up at Wrexham and the month will end with Neil Warnock returning to Home Park with his Oldham Athletic side. Best just to see what reception he'll get from the Argyle fans. I'm sure it'll be favourable. This is John O'Neill. Watson's clearance. And indeed, it does go over the Linda stand, so we'll need another football, please, sir. Thank you very much. This is Warren. But number two, here's Neil Young. Joe's in across. Takes a deflection from an eye defender and it's Bournemouth's fifth corner of the game. <laughs> so Bournemouth have brought the big man up from the back. Howe, Cox and O'Neill all up there. Flying header there from Jean. Beardsmore. Beardsmore crosses it in. Cox. The flag is up. The offside flag is up. It's an Argyle free kick. Well, not surprisingly, Bournemouth now feeling a change is necessary. And John O'Neill, the man is going to come off. 
the man from Celtic. It's going to leave the field of play. And onto the field of play in the stable court, Justin Brissett, very speedy winger. 23 years of age. Last season he had a very good start to the season before injury prevented a memorable time for him. But a lot of pace chasing on Brissett and in fairness Bournemouth really did have to do something. They're looking very devoid of ideas up front. Brissett's taken the place on the um, left-hand side of the midfield. We obviously want to um, be required to get some service up for those strikers. And here is Brissett. Billy cuts him, cuts him out and Sheffield has a back pass to deal with. And it's a Bournemouth throw-in. Well oh dear, what a waste. I understand Bournemouth hope to sign Norwegian under-21 international Anders Lund from Mould very shortly on a month or loan until the end of the season. He could sign by the end of the week. The club program likens into Solskjaer apparently, never mind. Little John now, beautifully found, can run at the Bournemouth defence. Algene, Little John again, Hodges ahead of him. And Saunders rather caught nothing and lucky Argyle keep possession. Barlow. O'Hagan can run onto this, but uh, looks like... I think that's a throw into um, Bournemouth. Hard to tell as Cox came steaming in. Indeed, it's a goal kick. Look at the clock, as we're halfway through the second half. Pen of two, Bournemouth nil. And the ball held up for Fletcher. Rawlinson, the shot. Well, the first real effort from Warren there that Sheffield's had to save. To get the ball in play as well. And despite dominating possession, Bournemouth have really threatened John Sheffield and Warren finally getting an effort Worthy of a save from Sheffield, and Sheffield, despite struggling at first, manages to keep the ball in play. And our goal now are in possession for Jean Saunders. Chris Billy keeps the ball in play. Billy tries to drill it in towards Saunders, fails to find his man, and now it's Rawlinson. Rawlinson, lovely ball there to Brissett. Brissett stopped by Collins. Number two is Neil Young. Bournemouth, as per usual, with a possession. Beardsmore. Lovely flick there to um, number eight here, Robinson. Vincent. Vincent with a shot. That was a spectacular effort just over. Bournemouth are getting closer. Seeing um, Justin Brissett here just reminds me of... But when back in the 80s, Bournemouth came to Argyle in the old second division when Lupa Blissett had just signed for the club and at that time he was on fire, couldn't stop scoring. And so yeah, very, Bournemouth were very, very unlucky not to have made the playoffs. Players such as Ian Bishop in their side, of course, back then. They were a very good side. Number nine, Adrian Littlejohn. Back to the present. Littlejohn, twisting and turning. Gets in a good cross. Only cleared as far as Lee Hodges. Can he score a debut goal? Hodges is brought down. The referee, not for one moment, suggested he was going to give a penalty. Now it's Littlejohn, using his strength to earn possession again. Robinson clears the ball for Argyle throwing. 
Well, a little wry look from Lee Hodges at the referees. Just for a moment, my ask for a penalty, but the referee having absolutely none of it. And here's Hodges now trying to make up for that. Barlow. Barlow, round Cox, has a shot blocked by Howe. I got unlucky. But no time to reminisce on that because Bournemouth attacking now. Billy's header. Bournemouth still in possession as they head towards the penalty area. Superb shot. Fisted away there by John Sheffield. Well, Christopher Warren has forced John Sheffield to earn his money this afternoon. A shot earlier. And then John Sheffield, more of a punch than a save. And it's Bournemouth, sixth corner of the afternoon. Nineteen minutes left. Bournemouth really threatening here. The ball's out of play. Yes, it is. The Argonne offence looked all over the place and will be relieved that the referee's assistant raised his flag. And they can breathe a huge sigh of relief as they have a goal kick. Bournemouth push forward. Jamie Vincent. Lee Hodges desperately trying to make up ground. Brissett. Argyle's throw. Cox forward, I got losing possession. It's an I got goal kick, well played by the young but rapidly improving Paul Watton. O'Hagan got the flick on there. Now it's Lee Hodges. O'Hagan bursting through. O'Hagan goes down, but Neil Young must have won the ball first. The referee allows play to continue. Justin Brissett. Algene. Oh, very unlucky to not find Noel Saunders. And well played Simon Collins. He's played every position under the sun in his time at Plymouth. Good block there to deny Chris De Warren. This is now Brissett. Poor cross. Easy for Barlow to pick up and clear. Cox with the header. Saunders. Now it's Algeen. Argyle could break here and cause Bourne some problems. It's Algeen. Lee Hodges. Little John making a run to his left. There is Little John. First time cross. Surely on the cards. Algeen bursting through. And he must have used his hands because the referee's blown up for a Bournemouth free kick. That was a promising move for Argyle and Algeen could have been through. Straight to Barlow here, another attack for Argyle. Billy. He's got Hodges and O'Hagan in there as well as Jean. The cross finds none of them. Barlow brings it down nicely. O'Hagan turns. O'Hagan gets a shot in. The keeper can only parry. And Hodges was inches away from getting a touch into an empty net. Determined tackle there from Williams. And Argyle again pushing forward. Good spell for the Pilgrims. O'Hagan. He's crossed a shot across the face of the goal and almost led in Hodges moments earlier. Billy. Barlow. I'll go for once having a bit of possession themselves. Oh, oh, Billy was a bit of a sleep there. Why didn't O'Hagan go for that one? Good little turn there from Fletcher, but Williams can play it back safely to the keeper. Things are livening up now.
Adrian loves a draw. Hodges has gone down as he was twisting and turning for the umpteenth time. Let's hope Hodges is all right. Argyle then with 10 men. Chris Billy on the ball. Barlow. Watson loses out. Bournemouth play on. Collins. Now it's Williams. Norman Methurst has had to sprint all the way around the pitch to get to Hodges. I got goal kick. Mick Jones will be concerned on the bench. Lee Hodges is still down. He's finally got up. He's limping, but it might looks like he might be allowed back onto the field to play any moment to, to go. Elsheen is through. Elsheen, one on one against the keeper. It really should have been 3 0. Elsheen was through. He beat the attentions of two or three defenders. I got a shot in, the keeper was beaten, but unfortunately the post wasn't. It was the wrong side of the post, and Bournemouth are still in this game at 2-0. It's time for a substitution. Bournemouth not sure who they want to come off. Double substitution, in fact. Mark Rawlinson's going to go off. It looks like Steve Robinson's coming off as well. So Frank Rowling's come onto the field of play, the man who was born in France, had a disappointment, disappointing performance against Wrexham and that's why he was dropped. And also onto the field of play are the number 14, Mike Dean. So Bournemouth manager Mel Mitchell has had his last throw of the dice, got all three substitutes on in a desperate attempt to get back into this game. Martin Barlow. Again, the long ball, searching for Sheen. This time, too much pace on the ball. Easy for Glass to cut out the danger. That's another pun, never mind. Cut out, get it? No. Barlow. Well, Sheen's having lots of joy at the moment. Little John on the left hand side. Little John, my goodness. Glass would have been helpless as. Little John drilled in a cross come shot. And lucky for Bournemouth, it was just over. Hodges is still limping, and I fear he might have to come off any moment. O'Hagan. Lee Hodges bursting through. Hodges has a shot, a superb save from Jimmy Glass. Well, Lee Hodges for the umpteenth time showing some superb skill to get in a shot. Set himself up perfectly, and Jimmy Glass having to produce an outstanding save. The rain's now pouring down again. O'Hagan finds Little John. Little John. Form of defences at sixes and sevens. Finally cut out by Rowling. Fletcher.
Cox is on. Looks like he's an emergency striker now for Bournemouth. They push him up field. And Cox, who was Bournemouth's leading goal scorer last season with eight goals, has been pushed forward now in a desperate attempt to get Bournemouth something from this game. They've got about nine and a half minutes to equalise Bournemouth. Really is the last throw of the dice for Mel Machen in his side. Well, they can start now by getting one goal back. Sheffield didn't look too certain. And Cox has kept the ball in play. Well, the referee's assistant is flagging. It's a goal kick. The ball must have gone out of play. The fans are starting to celebrate. These really are the loyal fans we're seeing at home part nowadays. The die-hard supporters, and they've been rewarded with what looks like being Argyle's first successive win in the league. The ball forward by Howe. Number three is Vincent. O'Hagan trying to get there first, but Dean got there instead. This is Neil Young on that right-hand side. Gets round Algene. Gets in across as well. Cox thwarted by Mark Saunders. It's a throw into Bournemouth. Well, it's desperate measures now for Bournemouth. Vincent. <laughs> Bournemouth deadling around on that left-hand side. Now Argo looks like getting away. Appreciated by these Argyle fans. Never once have they not got behind these fans. They've been 100% loyal to the team. Giving their undivided commitment. This is Mike Dean. Neil Young is the number two for Bournemouth. And now it's Cox, the club captain and player of the year. And he has looked very good this afternoon as well. Had a good performance. Williams. Well, Little John, he's got one defender to beat and then he's like, throw and goal. Little John, he beats his defender now. Can he beat the goalkeeper? Yes, he can. Adrian Little John back to his very, very best. Argyle have now wrapped up the points. Adrian Little John scores his third goal in a week and his sixth goal of the season. Superb goal on the break. Venus defender, then a very confident finish indeed, reminiscent of the promotion days when Little John couldn't stop goal scoring. With six minutes left, it's Paul Vargar 3, Bournemouth 0, Adrian Erdogan with his second goal of the game. And as Argyle fans celebrate, Bournemouth fans already soaking wet out in the open, make, start to make their way home. A lot of them have given up the chase already. That was a goal of quality. No other words can describe that. First of all, to find Little John in so much space, then Little John using his pace and skill to beat the defender, and then such precision and confidence to beat Jimmy Glass. And I got now 3-0 up and have this game wrapped up. Cox 
Can Bournemouth get a consolation goal before the end of the day to reward their suffering fans behind the goal? Barlow. One now for Elgin to get on the end of. Bournemouth throw in. This is Eddie Howe. The amount of supporters in the away end getting smaller and smaller as the minute, each minute goes on. Barlow. Disappointing ball. The cross in there. Saunders, can he clear it? Yes, he can. Little John now. He's on for a hat-trick, of course. Little John. Like a man possessed at the moment. Still Little John. He's going for the goal to end all goals. And in the end, it takes a superb tackle by Howe to prevent Little John from scoring a most spectacular of hat-tricks. And this is Elgin. Barlow. Bolo going for the spectacular. Far too wide at the end of the day. Well, Bournemouth fans will just want the game to end. Argyle would dearly love a fourth, wouldn't they? And you just hope, for the sake of defence now, Argyle can keep a clean sheet. They richly deserve one. Like I said at half-time, they've only had two all season. They've worked so hard this afternoon, deserve not to concede any goals. Cox, nice little turn. He's not sentimental at all, he'll want to score a goal. And still Cox. Came with Watson at the end of the day, and now Bournemouth earned their seventh corner of the afternoon. With two and a half minutes left of the second division fixture. Plymouth 3, Bournemouth 0. So the rain lashing down, miserable conditions for Bournemouth. Their misery only compounded by this hammering they're getting from the Pilgrims at the moment. This is Young. Cox is through. Well cut out this time by Mark Saunders. Mature performance from Saunders, coming back to help defend his teammates. Vincent will take this corner for Bournemouth. Desperately trying to get one consolation goal to reward their supporters' loyalty. Beardsmore, the former Man United star. Well, where did it all go wrong for Beardsmore? Once touted as one of the brightest young talents in British football. But in fairness, he's been revitalised since. Going to Bournemouth. Beardsmore must be sped over the amount of people that have asked him where did it go wrong. He could have had the world at one stage, it seemed. O'Hagan, clear foul. And O'Hagan stays down. I think it was Frank Rowling with a rather harsh challenge, let's just say that. Billy. Asking a lot of Elsheen, but thankfully he's equal to it. Billy's first time cross. Hodges beautifully chested down, got in a shot. And what an outstanding debut it's been for Lee Hodges. Marvellous, his marvellous skill put our goal on the road to victory, setting up the first goal for LG. And he's been lively throughout, showing some inspirational touches of skill. You can see why West Ham have rewarded him with a contract recently. He's got a bright future in this game. He's been a substitute for West Ham on occasions this season, and it won't be long on this one before he's making a name for himself in the FA Carlin Premiership. Not a good ball, but Vincent still gets it. Rolling. Now the referee's blown up here. Seems to be a facial injury to Simon Collins. Whether it was an off-the-ball incident, I'm not quite sure. I didn't see anything untoward.
Well, I got a Mr. Services of Ronnie Mojay and Carlo Corazon yet. The pair will be delighted with the way their teammates have performed this afternoon. They'll be proud of them. We're now into stoppage time. At the end of a very good day for Plymouth. Seven goals in two games. Can't ask for much more from his strikers. And at the moment, the defenders are keeping a clean sheet as well. What Lou Reed would call the perfect day. Vincent. Billy, flicks on by Jean, and O'Hagan is through. And listen to the ovation Argyle get, thoroughly deserved. They had a great start, quarter of an hour into the game, there were two goals to nil up. Elgin scored the first after ten minutes, after great work from Lee Hodges. And then Elgin set up Adrian Littlejohn for a superb second. Into the second half, Littlejohn's work was far from over, he scored a superb third goal, showing him pace and precision to give Argyle a fantastic day out at home park. Bournemouth will claim they deserve more from the game. They had four, four times as many corners as Argyle. But at the end of the day, Little John did what the former players failed to do. Sheffield was rarely tested. The end of a fine week for Argyle. Three successive victories. And again, there are 11 heroes out there for Argyle. It's finished Plymouth Argyle 3, 4 0. Roll on the good times, Argyle. <laughs>